All right. Good evening, Linda Road Church family. I'll wait a, a few minutes for people to go ahead and uh, let me know that they're on. That way I know that they can hear me and I don't have any technical difficulties that I'm not aware of. While I'm waiting for that and while you chime in and, and say that you're here and you can hear me just fine, uh, let me remind you of two things or maybe just one thing, I don't know. Uh, earlier in the week, Clint had put on um, something on the Linda Road Facebook page, the private page, about things that, that you may be reading. Uh, go ahead and, and answer that. I want to know what, what people have been reading too. Uh, I suspect that a lot of people may be uh, just hesitant to be honest and say, you know what, I'm reading all the memes that are coming out on social media, which that's fine. If that's all that you're reading, that that's cool. Good deal. I got one person that says that they can hear me. Thank you. Uh, the Davisons are here. So go ahead and put uh, put down what you've been reading. Uh, that's kind of fun to see, and it's encouraging, too. Uh, even if, it's, if it is just God's Word, or I know I, I love John Grisham. I've been trying to read some of that, and uh, along with some other uh, commentaries and things like that that I've been reading. So go ahead and do that. Also, for those of you that are, are in the group for the, the teens, uh, be, be a part of that in the, the challenges that are coming out with that. This week's challenge is to recreate a family photo. I am hoping to recreate a family photo tonight of our family of when Hayes was a baby. So that, uh, that could be a train wreck, but either way, I'm hoping to post that tonight. And, and so you can see what that would, that'll look like. Um, anyways, as people are signing on, I, I want to go ahead and, and get started with uh, talking about and sharing uh, some things that I've been, that's been on my heart, that I've been reading about and things like that. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I've been trying to dig into the book of Isaiah, and it's interesting that uh, Richard shared a little bit about that this morning, um, specifically from Isaiah chapter 40. And the commentary that I'm reading is the NIV application commentary. And in their series introduction, there's a couple of things that really stood out to me uh, with regards to the NIV application commentary. And that's this. Um, God's word is timely. The authors of scripture spoke to specific situations, problems, and questions. Scripture is not only timely, but timeless. Just as God spoke to the original audience, so he still speaks to us through the pages of Scripture. The timeless nature of Scripture enables it to speak with power in every time and in every culture. And as I, I read that this week, and I thought, wow, that is, that is powerful. Um, and also encouraging to know that uh, as a Christian, I've got a document that, that I hold and I read and I cherish uh, that it's not just an old book, but it still speaks truth today. And that's something that I've always known and uh, have always shared it to, in some capacity uh, to our teens and to those that I, that I teach, uh, that, hey, God's word still speaks to us today. What, what's the application? And I appreciate that series introduction to the NIV commentary, application commentary, that, that just says that, hey, God's word is timely, it's timely to the audience that uh, that scripture is written to, but it's also timeless and it, it still speaks power to today's situations and today's cultures uh, across the world. And so I thought that that uh, was phrased really, really well and, and just solidified for me some things that I've always known, but maybe haven't communicated that very well. And so I've, I've been thinking about uh, the lessons that, like John did this morning for the adult class and the, the lesson that Richard presented this morning, uh, the lessons that Clint have done, and how the, the different passages that have been shared uh, over the last three or four weeks, that they are timely and, and that it speaks to the audience that those authors wrote to in that time, particular place and time, and in that particular situation. 
but in our particular situation, it is timeless. And so one of the things I want us to think about uh, is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And if you have your Bibles, uh, I can't see you, but I'm hoping that you'll open up your Bibles, whether it's on, uh, maybe you want to get rid of my face and pull up your Bible on, on online or, or your phone or pull out your own paper Bible. But turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 2 through 10. And I want you to, to catch uh, the fact that uh, Paul is writing to the, the Thessalonians or to the church in Thessalonica. And the, his words are timely, but we're also going to talk about how uh, his words are also timeless and they speak to us today. And what's interesting, I want us to consider something here too. And this is something that our, our teams have uh, challenged me on in, this past week. We try to get together. I try to get together over Zoom with our teams uh, every Tuesday. And one of the things I asked a, a core group of our teens, I said, well, what do you want to what do you want to study about? What lessons do you want us to to dive into? And one of the things that, that uh, Amelia Coleman said, and I was so appreciative of her insight and the other teens echoed this was, you know, we're we know we're in this pandemic and we know that we're in quarantine and social distancing. And and quite frankly, we're tired of hearing lessons about that. <laughs> uh, it, but. I thought that that was so insightful because I, as I was considering tonight's lesson and how God's word is timely and is timeless, there's a much broader application than just our present circumstances. But it is uh, something, oh, sorry, I just got a notification that uh, my battery is about to die. I think I am plugged in. I'm plugged in, so my laptop's not going to die. Uh, but it's... Um, there's a broader application here with regards to God's word and, and that it not only speaks into our, our present circumstances, but our, our circumstances that we're going to face a year from now or our circumstances that we'll face five years from now or 10 years from now or 20 years from now. Uh, and our circumstances are going to change uh, with each passing day, each passing week, each passing month, each passing year, our circumstances will change. And God's word, regardless of the circumstances, will still continue to have power because it is timeless. So let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 and following. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of, of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone everywhere, gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. One of the things I did at the very beginning of the week, uh, I shared with our parents in an email, uh, verses two through four. One of the things that, that you might hear a lot about, or, and I know I've used this phrase is, hey, when times are good, don't forget to pray. Don't forget to pray and thank God uh, during the good times. It's easy to pray during the difficult times, but pray, pray during the, the good times as well. Well, I know that uh, depending on your situation, your, your situation may be more difficult than others. And, and uh, it is a difficult situation for all of us. And it's easy to pray uh, right now because it's difficult. But you never hear anyone say, hey, when, when times are hard, pray for the good things. And you know what? That's what, that's what Paul is doing. You look at, at Acts chapter 17 and you consider uh, the, the circumstances 
under which the gospel came to the city of Thessalonica. Paul is there, he and his companion Silas and Timothy, he's there for approximately three weeks. The text tells us three Sabbaths, so approximately three weeks. Uh, but while he's there, what's interesting is that it's the Jews that get jealous of what Paul and his companions are doing. And the, the people of Thessalonica are, are open and receptive to the gospel, to the good news. And because of this, it's the Jews that get jealous and, and they uh, begin uh, an uprising of sorts and begin persecuting Paul and begin persecuting Silas and Timothy and the new Christians that are there. And Paul is forced to leave because of that, of that persecution. And later on down the road, he writes a letter back to the Thessalonians, and, and that's the letter that we're reading right now. Uh, but even in that, uh, verse 6, with the, uh, for you received the word in much affliction, that the, the Christians there received the word of God, received the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, under much duress and affliction and even persecution. And, and so Paul, he's even telling, telling the, the Thessalonians, and, and what he commonly does is that, hey, even though times are tough, I am still remembering the good things, and I'm still thankful. And he says, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the work of faith that is taking place in you. I'm thankful for the labor of love that you continue to carry on. I'm thankful for the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. Even though times are tough and you receive the gospel under great affliction. And Paul is, is definitely proud of, of the church in Thessalonica or Thessalonica. He's proud of the Thessalonians. So much so that when you get down to verse, verse 8, for not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia, the region in which Thessalonica is in, but also another region, Achaia. But your faith in God has gone forth everywhere. Paul is, is writing, most likely writing the Thessalonians, um, writing to the Thessalonians from the city of Corinth. And he's not even in his own, uh, he's not even there. He's in a different region and he's writing. He's saying, hey, I'm hearing reports about you and your faith and your labor of love and the hope that you have so much so that there's nothing to report on. It, it's all good stuff. You see that the Thessalonians, even though they their, their things were difficult, times were tough for them, more than likely when they received this, this word, this letter from Paul, they were still dealing with afflictions and persecutions. Could you imagine being in the Thessalonian church in Thessalonica and, and maybe you're there and you're getting discouraged and you're uh, in, in a position where it's like, is, is it worth it? Is all this persecution that I'm facing, is it, is it worth it? Uh, my, my family maybe is turning on me. My, uh, I, I'm not able to receive the, the business that I, I once had or, or whatever it is. And then you get this letter from Paul and you all get together in what, whoever's home and you read this and you read these words of encouragement. Talk about God's word being timely. It's perfect. God's word is speaking to the Thessalonians and, and it's encouraging the Thessalonians. But you know what? God's word is also timeless. Consider the, uh, the, the timelessness of, of God's word in our present circumstances. Regardless of what they may be, uh, it may be more difficult for some than others. It's difficult for all of us. But there's a broader perspective here. What kind of examples can we be during this time? How, how will people see uh, our faith at work? How will people in our community and maybe our counties, uh, and I know there, there are people that are chiming in from Mississippi, from Washington, from uh, Colorado, Nebraska, all over the place. I can see it here. Just people from all, all over uh, the country. And, and this video will be viewed uh, after I go, uh, I, I quit going live here. But 
God's love or the, uh, the labor of love that will continue in our communities or in our counties or in the regions that we're in. And people will see uh, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. They'll see in us an example. They'll see an example of what it means to believe in the gospel, to believe in Jesus Christ, to have a hope, to know that there is more to this maybe this life, maybe this present circumstance that, that we are in, whatever it may be. I think of, of these words, and I, I think of those few sentences that I read uh, from the NIV application commentary at the beginning, and, and God's word is timely, and yet it is timeless, and it still speaks to us today. I, I hope that is an encouragement to you and that you'll, you'll take that concept tonight and not just apply it to, uh, to your, your life today, but that you'll apply it to your life tomorrow and in the coming week, in the coming weeks and months, the coming year, the coming years. And I know that uh, six months from now, there'll be a, a different part of God's word that will speak to me because uh, my, my situation or my circumstances will have changed. And that's because God's word is timeless. I think of, of the book of Isaiah. I referenced that earlier, and Richard talked about it uh, as well this morning in his lesson. And, and Isaiah uh, starting in, in chapter 40 and, and going to the end of the book, uh, Isaiah is covering uh, when, when the Israelites or the nation of Judah goes into Babylonian captivity. And at the end of Isaiah, he covers the fact that the Babylonians will come out of, uh, out of captivity. Now there's, depending on, on what scholars you read and, and everything, you know, when, was, when was the book of Isaiah written? It, it spans 200 years. Did, did Isaiah receive that word and write it all down in, uh, during his lifetime, or how did that come to be? I don't know, and I don't want to get into that uh, right now, but, but here at the end of, of the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, Isaiah's words is timely in that he is writing to the exiles that are in captivity in Babylon, and they're about to be set free. Persia has come in and has uh, taken over. Babylon, Babylon is no longer the, the ruling empire, it is now Persia, and the, the rulers of Persia are, are telling all the exiles, regardless of, of what nation you're from, it says, hey, uh, the, the leaders are saying, you can go home. Think of the excitement that they, that they have. And then they might consider Isaiah chapter 61 Verses 1 through 4, I want to read that. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. The oil, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. And as I read through those words, talk about the encouragement that the audience received when Isaiah wrote, and then the audience that, that received those words when they heard, and they're like, hey, we're going home. And maybe when they heard that they were going home, they said, oh, Isaiah chapter 61. Maybe they didn't say it quite like that. They didn't have English then. But Isaiah 61. And this is one of those uh, passages that is a reference, a prophecy of the coming Messiah and what he will do 
and the timelessness that this passage has for us today in the Messiah. And that we can be those examples, just like the Thessalonians were, and that we are oaks of righteousness. I hope tonight has been an encouragement to you. I want to close this out in prayer. And again, thank you uh, for, for tuning in. Uh, and if you watch this later, thank you for watching it later. Uh, those of you that tune in later, um, thank you for being here. Uh, we love you. We, I miss you. I love you. We miss you. And can't wait uh, to be together again. Let's go to God in prayer. God, I thank you so much for everything that you do for us. We know that you are watching over us and that you are taking care of us. And you are uh, protecting us during this time. God, help us to grow in our faith during this time. Help us to continue to labor in love and help us to hold on to our hope that we have in your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the gospel message. Help us to be examples and help us to, to share your word that is timeless. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, family. We'll see you next time.